All right, good morning, brothers and sisters. This morning, I'm going to do a little study this morning, and I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read a couple of verses from 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 3 and 4, if I can keep my cat from attacking everything while we're doing this. <laughs> this is the newest cat. His name's Pretty Eyes. Hi, Pretty Eyes. Hi, Pretty Eyes. All right. So what I'm doing, I'm going to read 2 Timothy 4, verses 3 and 4. And then I'm going to read the breakdown of these Greek words from a book by Kenneth S. Wuist. I'll put it right here, see if you can see it. Kenneth S. Wuist. All right. And it's called Untranslatable Riches of the Greek New Testament. All right, so these verses. I got a crazy cat trying to play with me this whole morning. <laughs> All right, here we go. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 3 and 4. It says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers. Heap to themselves teachers. That means lots of them. Having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth. And shall be turned unto fables. And shall be turned unto fables. Alright, this book by Kenneth, Kenneth S. Wuist. It's an old book, copyright, copyrighted from 1940, the 1940s, I believe. Um, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to read his breakdown of verse 3 and 4 right there. And it's a little little hard to understand, but you, I believe you'll get it. It says, verses 3 and 4. The exhortation to proclaim the word is given in view of the common defection from the faith once for all delivered to the saints the word endure remember it said they will not endure sound doctrine the word endure means literally to hold oneself upright or firm against a person or thing it is a perfect description of the modernist and his following today the greek word translated sound has an idea of healthy wholesome the word doctrine is preceded by the definite article. It is Paul's system of doctrine that is referred to, the Pauline theology. After is from a preposition whose root meaning is down. It speaks of domination. Lusts is in the Greek. Cravings. These who set themselves against Pauline theology are dominated by their own private personal cravings those cravings consist of the desire for personal gratification they having itching ears heap to themselves teachers the Greek makes it clear that the itching ears belong to the people the word heap means to accumulate in piles to accumulate in piles they, they heap to themselves teachers they accumulate piles of them to accumulate in piles. It speaks of the crowd electing teachers in mass. Does this sound familiar? An indiscriminate multitude of teachers. These teachers give the people what they want, not what they need. You hear that? These teachers give the people what they want, not what they need. The word itch in its active verb form means to scratch, to tickle, to make, to itch. In the passive, to itch. It describes that person who desires to hear for more gratification. This is a very important section. It says, like the Greeks at Athens who spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear, not some new thing, but some newer thing. Mm. Not just to tell some new thing, 
but to sell, tell some newer thing. And that thing that happened yesterday, that's old news. It's garbage. We don't need it anymore. Remember that? Remember that right there. The comparative form of the adjective is used here, not the positive. Ernest Gordon com commenting on this verse says, Hardly has the latest novelty has the latest novelty been toy hardly has the latest novelty been toyed with then it is cast aside as stale and frayed and a newer is sought does it sound familiar to you if that's not new and exciting we might as well not watch it right man it says Greeks at Athens who spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear not some new thing, but something newer. I'm going to reread this next part. It says the comparative form of the adjective is used here, not the positive. Ernest Gordon, commenting on this verse, says, "Hardly has the latest, hardly has the latest novelty been toyed with, than it is cast aside as stale and frayed, and a newer is sought." One has here the volatile spirit of the Greek city. So, in contrast with the gravity and poise of the Christian spirit, engaged with eternal things, such as the spirit of modernism with its teachings of the divinity of mankind and the relativ relativity of the truth. The truth isn't relative. Its rejection of the doctrine of, to of total depravity and sacrificial atonement, the resurrection, and the need of the new birth, Catering to the desire, cater to the desires of a fallen race. I'm going to reread that. One has here the volatile spirit of the Greek city. So, in contrast with the gravity and poise of the Christian spirit engaged with eternal things, such is the spirit of modernism with its teachings of the divinity of mankind and the relativity of truth. Its rejection of the doctrine of total depravity, the doctrine of total depravity, that's what we teach, and sacrificial atonement, the resurrection and the need of the new birth, catering to the desires of the fall, they cater to the desires of the fallen race. It gratifies man's pride. It soothes his troubled conscience. The desire for the gratification of one's cravings is insatiable and is increased or aggravated by having the desire satisfied. Hence, the heaping to themselves of teachers. The words turn away. Let me read that over here again. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. The words turn away carry the idea of averting. That is, those who follow these heretics not only turn away their ears from the truth, but see to it that their ears are always in such a position that they will never come in contact with the truth. Like a contrary windmill. This is powerful. Like a, country, like a country windmill whose owner has turned its veins so they will not catch the wind. Notice the active voice of the verb, turn away, and the passive voice of the verb, shall be turned. The first named action is performed by the people themselves, while in the case of the second one, they are acted upon by an outside force. The second occurrence of the word turn is from a verb which means to turn or twist out. In a medical sense, it means to wrench out of its proper place as of the limbs it is used of a disclo dislocated arm for instance when people avert their ears from the truth they lay themselves open to every satanic influence and are easily turned aside to error instead of being in correct adjustment to the truth namely that of seeking it for the purpose of a appropriating it these people have put themselves out of adjustment and have been consequently wrenched out of place. They have been become dislocated, put out of joint, like a dislocated arm, which has no freedom of action. They have given themselves over to a delusion. 
which incapacitates them for any for any independent thinking along religious lines which they might do for themselves it says they are in much the same condition as those under the reign of the beast who because they refuse to receive the love of the truth are the victims of a strong delusions of, of a strong delusion the word fable is from a Greek word which refers to fiction as opposite to fact and surely the teachings of modernism are fictional as to their nature for they have a theoretical basics and unproven hypotheses of science naturalism and evolution I go back over here I'm gonna mm. I'm going to reread this one little portion. It says, Like the Greeks at Athens who spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear not some new thing, but some newer thing. Mm. Hardly has the latest novelty been toyed with than it is cast aside as stale and frayed and a newer is sought. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and they shall be turned away unto fables love you all brothers and sisters you have a blessed wonderful day stay strong in the lord jesus loves you seek truth